what is a brain and what is a mind? People may often quickly think that the mind is what the brain does. But when you dig deeper, the mind, as Dan Siegel describes it and defines it, is an embodied relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information. And with that definition of our mind, we remember that our mind as, in, as connected to our brain is in a body and, and is experienced and expressed in our relationships. And I'm here joined with Rob and Janet, who are two people who have experienced significant changes in their brains. And those have had an impact on all aspects of how their minds work in the world. And what we're here to do is to have a conversation with them about what their experience is and what we can do as people who may not have had those kind of changes to understand and relate better to the kind of experiences that people who have had changed brains experience. So let me start by asking you, Janet, can you tell us a little bit what it's like to experience mind and your brain from your perspective? Well, I love this question because as a person that lives with a brain injury and has lived with a brain injury for 21 years now, I often think about the difference between this organ that, that sits here in my skull and has certain functions to keep me going and my mind. And living with this brain injury has made it very clear that they're two different things. I'd like to say that early on in my brain injury, I did not know this. And I had the experience of waking up one day with the brain that I knew and loved and that worked very well and, and suited me and eased my way through life, having a couple injuries in a month, actually. But in, in the twinkling of an eye, the organ of the brain stopped working in any way that was familiar to me. More than that, it was injured. It was, it was broken in some ways. And so the part of me that I relied on to think problems through could no longer think problems through. If I had lost an arm in an accident, my brain processes and my mind, Phil, would help me strategize and think logically through ways to adapt life without an arm. When the brain and probably the part of myself that I most identified with was the part that was injured, I was not able to do that. And that is when I started having to reach out to the entirety of me and my community in that relational sense to understand that this deeper sense of mind was needed to step in and do what my injured brain would no longer do. It's as if perhaps in some way the mind grew to help heal your brain. The, the, Phil, exactly. And as people who live with brain injury, we learn that both the function of the brain also it's such a difficult topic to talk about, Phil. It's so nebulous. But um, let me say this. Other parts of ourselves, our hearts, step forward to see us through our journey. Um, 
we invite other people to become our allies and to step in and do functions that our brains won't do anymore. We have to learn to think of ourselves in new ways because if all I am is this, if my whole identity comes from this, I can't remember how much the brain weighs, but this organ in my head, I tell you, that's a pretty small identity. The mind is a vast identity. The heart is our strongest and most beautiful resource. And we live among allies that will, will share the load and walk with us in our healing if we can connect with them and allow them to do that. And part of that connecting, Janet, starts with understanding. Yes. And I'd like if you could share a little about how you experience time. One way that many of us are affected is that time, um, time, I am not able to understand time in the way I did before and in the way I think our culture functions. Um, calendars have no meaning for me that today is, Saturday or Tuesday or that it's 1.30 in the morning or 12.30 in the afternoon. I, I, my brain is not able to, um, on its own, manage those concepts. So you're putting attention on the idea that it takes energy and effort to use these brains that we have. And Rob, can you share a little bit about your story and what it's like for you to use your brain and your mind. Like um, there was a game in the eighties like called Boggle and, and you'd, you'd mix up the pieces and you'd spell them out and um, the, the blocks would spell a word. And um, in my brain, um, I think that, um, I think that um, I, I might know that I, I want to do, 10 things today and um the the in my experience the boggle of brain part is um like well what the heck um, why did i put these 10 things down on my list today um these 10 things are completely ridiculous um um i would never be able to do all 10 of these things in the same day um and um so frequently, um, I have, um, I have, in my experience, I have um, come to terms with the fact that um, I, I frequently um, look to a person um, without a brain change. I'll, I'll look to my wife and I'll say, um, my wife's name is Becky, and I'll say, um, um, excuse me, Becky. Will you please look at my task list and see if these things are reasonable for me to do? And um, um, I'll, I'll get her opinion to see if um, they're reasonable things to do. And then I'll do them if they're reasonable. Thank you. And so, Janet, can I ask you, what um, helps other people to become better allies? I would say empathy and compassion and desire. And I have noticed um, there are some people that I've known for many years preceding my brain injury that simply aren't able to put themselves in my position and see the world through my eyes. And I understand that. They, they remain beloved and wonderful. Um, there are some people that meet me in an instant and are able to see how things might be for me. And, um, you know, I don't know what the difference is in people. Um, curiosity to understand. Um, asking questions, listening deeply, listening past the words. Um, 
imagining what it might be if you didn't understand the calendar, for example, which is a hard thing to manage or to under, you know, to even imagine if you don't have a brain injury. Um, exquisite sensitivity to someone else's needs, which is a big ask in our busy world. Um, I think the biggest thing, ah, slowing down. I need for people to slow things down for me on a fairly regular basis. If I'm on the phone, let's say with some government office who, and I'm trying to get information, they will rattle along so quickly that I can't understand. So, you know, asking people to slow down, people's willingness. Rob, I'd like to ask you, what do you want other people to understand about having a brain injury? Um, I, would, I, I would definitely want to share um, the, um, that um, patience and perseverance are probably the two things, like patience, because there are days where I'm not sure what I wish to do, and um, perseverance because um, um, it requires a lot of um, new um, energy, new effort to do tests that I used to do all the time. So um, um, I think um, I definitely think that um, if somebody if I met someone who had a new brain injury, I would, I would, I would um, wish for them um, patience and perseverance because it'll take so much effort to do the things that you think you used to do so easily. So um, patience and perseverance. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, and Janet, um, you mentioned this a little bit, but I wanted to see if you had any more that you wanted to say about how a brain injury is different from other kinds of injuries. We, when, when our brain, brains are injured, we lose the part of ourselves that is able to observe ourselves and tell what's going on. And again, this is my brain injury, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this. Um, many of us lose the part of ourselves that is able to do things in sequence. And so if we would think about almost anything we do in our lives cooking, for example, I would say it took me 10 years, but maybe longer, to really be able to cook again. Um, there's a decision to make, what to cook. There's, um, there's a scheduling thing, when to cook, when to have enough time to cook. There's an ingredient list, how to get all the ingredients in, line, in, in the house, in the kitchen at one time. For years, that would take me five or six trips to the grocery store. Even, I'm a list maker too, like Rob. Even with a list, my eyes would skip over items and I would go back in again and again so that by the time I got the last necessary ingredient, the first ingredient was rotten, right? No good anymore. Being able to follow the written directions in the right order, step one, step two, step three. So tasks that we might have learned in grade school when my mom started teaching me to cook um, are, are almost unachievable. And so uh, the example um, that I used earlier and that I'll use now, if I lose my right arm and I'm right-handed, I might have to learn to cook again with the prosthetic, right? So there's the learning of the, 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 the moving, the managing of the prosthetic, or starting to work with my left hand, letting my left hand become, become dominant. And I don't want to minimize how challenging that might be, 
but my brain is able to strategize pretty easily how to do those things. It's a different level of challenge and complication. And Rob, for you, um, how can others relate to you in a way that is supportive? So t- today, um, what, I, what I try to live by is um, I, try to, I try to treat every person that I interact with, I try to treat them as if um, this person may have a changed brain and they may need me to um, speak slowly and clearly and um, allow them to comprehend what I'm saying. So um, that is the thing that I would most want to request other people to do. Please, please be slow and clear and understanding when speaking with others. Thank you, Rob. And so, Janet, let me ask you, for someone who may be newly experiencing a brain injury themselves or have a family member recently affected, what would you want them to know or to hear? There are several things that I wish I had heard when my brain was first injured. Number one, support groups are amazing. Peer support, spending time with others who have gone through this experience, it's one of the things that's really helped me survive and, 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 and to grow. Um, describing my brain injury or talking about what the last month has been like in a room full of people that live with brain injury, I look around the room and they're all nodding. There's compassion just shining through their faces. They're, they are sending me nonverbal encouragement. And I am held and valued. And if there's not a support group in your area, find someone, your doctor or one of the therapists you're seeing, um, the Brain Injury Association of your state will be able to connect you with someone who has a brain injury that can talk to you so you get that kind of unconditional understanding. Number two, I would say keep, like, Early on, get, as, get every bit as much therapy as you can get because the therapies that I got really helped me recover a lot of um, function in my brain. Um, three, time is an amazing ally of our brains because our brains are geared towards being, it's called neuroplastic, right? To, to doing rewiring on their own. And then there's all kinds of things we can do to help them rewire. Finally, don't listen to people who tell you that where you are is as far as you're going to go because it's simply not true. You know, as human beings and as brains, we keep changing. And my experience with myself and others is I keep getting better at living with a brain injury. My brain is rewiring. I am, di- I am discovering new adaptive skills all the time. Thank you. And, and Rob, what would you say to someone who may recently have had a brain injury Please be very patient and understanding of yourself and of the people who you interact with. Um, because um, I, I, I know that you understand that you have a changed brain. And um, 
please be understanding that not everyone in the world will will comprehend that you have a changed brain. So um um I would I would recommend um please proceed through your life very patient and understanding. Janet, what can what can the rest of us do if we don't either know or understand? Um I would love to ask people to pay a little more attention and to be curious because I am often weaving and wobbling. I mean, in a pretty um, dramatic way. And um, I'm sometimes reluctant to ask for help. It might be embarrassing or maybe just one too many things to do. And so if someone can just extend a simple kindness, like extending an arm that I could take so that I can stabilize myself a little bit. And then I think also, and it, it is to, to extend the generosity that we would each hope to experience from each other of um, a willingness to enter my world, try, you know, try on my hat for just a little while and see what the world might look like to me. Yeah.